Hi guys, and welcome to the first inaugural World Webcast. Uh, I'm Rich Steve from Wargames. I'm joined tonight by uh, Andrew Chesney, who's our events manager. Uh, we're also joined by Sam Phillips, who writes for not just World News Editor, but also for Beta War Tech Game Magazine. And we're also joined by Andy Singleton, followed by Painting Fame, who's painted all sorts of stuff for the World of News Editor as well. So guys, if you go around, uh, let's have a quick introduction from all of you about what you do. Uh, I'll kick things off. I'm Rich Lee. Um, I think um, my title is uh, Online, Online Community, Community Manager for World of Games, which means I watch over our Facebook pages, our forums, um, I help out with our newsletter, um, I help out with adding products to websites and all sorts of bits and pieces. Uh, I appear on a few different hangouts and I'll get things like this as well. Um, I'm just pushing World of Boards into new technical realms that are all very strange and dangerous. Um, that's kind of me, that's kind of what I do, among other things. Uh, Andrew Chesney, what do you do, sir? What do I do? Very, very good question. Um, I've been with Warroad for a number of years, done a number of things. Uh, for the last three or four years, I've been the events manager, uh, which involves us doing uh, 50, 55 shows a year. We go to do wargaming shows, tournaments, uh, campaign weekends, all sorts of different things. Uh, the main thing that I've kind of been interacting with is 150 odd GCN clubs. Uh, so anybody that doesn't know the, the gaming club network, check them out. They've got a Facebook page. They're, they're a very, very good British organisation to be uh, a part of. Um, they're spreading into Europe and all sorts of other places right now as well. But uh, I'm kind of like to be the driving force on, on the hobby and the actual gaming within World of Games. So I'd like to get out there face to face, talk to people at all the World Games shows, uh, and really get some feedback from the customers as well. Cool. Okay. Uh, Sam, who are you? What do you do? My name's Sam Phillips. Uh, I'm the one of the main writers for War of Games. I do quite a lot of the articles, both in historicals and sci-fi, so Judge Dredd, Antares, Terminator. Um, also, just recently had an Antares article out, Battle Report, sorry, in uh, Tabletop Gaming Magazine. That's quite nice. Um, but I also write for the Beast of War as well, these sort of comments from there. Um, yeah, generally writing about anything and everything to do with uh, well, war more than everything. Cool, excellent. And Mr. Simpson, who are you, sir? I'm a painter. Uh, you might, might possibly have seen some of my work on the Warlord page. Uh, there are quite a few step-by-step -step guides, history guides, things like that. Buy on my lunch break when I'm not painting toys for people. Uh, but yeah, I'm a full-time painter, so spend most of my time Surrounded by paints and glues and solvents, generally abusing them. Sitting exactly where you are right now. <laughs> exactly, yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent, okay, so that gives you a bit of an idea of who we all are, guys. So for the future webcasts, um, we're going to pick from the sort of four of us to get uh, a few regulars in each show. Um, so if you have any questions, typically on painting, on all kinds of bits and pieces for MD, give us a shout. If you have any questions about writing, writing uh, give us a shout. If you have any questions about events, uh, about clubs, interacting with awards, Anything like that, let us know. Um, yeah, if any questions, absolutely anything. If you've got questions on models, on releases and stuff, we can take them to the studio, uh, some of their advice and their, their points on that. Um, so, yeah, any questions, give us a shout. Okay, so next topic uh, is Warlord News. So what's new, what's coming out of Warlord this Friday? Maybe we'll get a few sneaky reviews in there. Uh, what's the recent news and all that kind of thing. So one of the big news events in the past couple of weeks is that we finally released the Katusha, the Soviet rocket truck. Uh, which has been in the works, I think, for around a year, maybe more, trying to get it mapped and trying to get it ready for release because it's a very fiddly structure to to get made. Uh, we experimented, I think, plastic at one point. We experimented with, I think, resins a few different times. Um, we've got it ready. It's all good. Uh, it's shipping out now to customers. Uh, it's a cracking kit. Um, so what do you guys think of that? What do you guys think of the kit? What do you guys think of the unit in the game? The game story. It's quite an iconic piece of the equipment. So, so yeah, what are your opinions, guys? I'm, I'm very excited by it because I can attach it to a certain large uh, boat that you guys do. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I also yeah. wanted to um, use, obviously use it for the Russian, but uh, I'm thinking of doing something Terminator-esque with it. Oh, okay. okay. Really? Yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll see how we get on with that. But yeah, I'm pr pretty excited about that. It's, it's nice. I've, I've seen it. Very, very nice, very, very cool, and um, yeah, let's get the answer. Nice, nice. nice. Uh, I had a look uh, at the one on your desk the other day, Rich, and oh, mate, it looks awesome. <laughs> it's one of those yeah. kits that you look at, like the picture of it, and you think that's going to be a horrendous peak to put together. That's yeah. it. 
Yeah, but it's, it's simple. It's simple. It goes a few parts. I can take maybe half an hour or so. No problem. Yeah. But and for anyone who anyone who has bought it already, uh, we know yeah. there are quite a few metal parts in there. So we've got a construction assembly diagram, which is being worked on at the moment, and we've been told we're in Monday Monday through by. So if you have any problems with it, there with us, um, we'll shout about it next Wednesday's newsletter. Um, so we are working on that, uh, which should make it a lot easier for you. But yeah, yeah, very excited about that. It's a cracking kit. Again, I'm gonna. I'm going to chuck it on Buffalo, obviously, because that's what I do with things. Um, so, yes, yeah, amazing. Um, other big news at the moment. Uh, Plastic Flash uh went out uh, probably about a month ago now or so. Um, and uh, they are popping up, painted, and converted, and mixed in with other sprues and bits and pieces all over the place. So, those, that's just a cracking kit. Again, as many options as we can get onto a sprue, really. Um, and the community have gone wild for them, um, which is fantastic. Uh, Andy's worked on those, I think. I think. Sam has got some way to him, or he's maybe already got them already. Um, yeah, again, you have experience with those kits? What do you think? Ah, oh, they're brilliant. Uh, like I said, I've done a few conversions with them where I mixed them with the Grenadier set. So I've been looking at them, doing a bit of research on the Battle Monte Casino as well. Um, the kind of kit that people were wearing, they were just so broad in style and what was issued. So I've got a Grenadier set as well, and I'm just going to mash the two together and come up with as many figures as I can that are different. I reckon, I could probably do the entire force where everything bigger is different between the two boxes. I think you might be right. It's one of the biggest selling points for me personally, is, uh, and it's got me back in. I've kind of avoided Germans because there have been a lot of German players in our in our club group, but I don't think I can avoid them any longer. I think that the Falschmjäger and the Grenadier kits, and even some of the other kits, you know, go through the Americans and strip out some weapons and arms and stuff like that. I think now's the time. To, to be able to keep bash and do some really iconic pieces. Falschnager for me are actually, you know, whether it be um, a scenario where they invade Britain or whether it be on Crete or whatever, else, they, they kind of jump out and they've done their own thing a lot more than most of the other um, uh, divisions or whatever. So, really iconic force. That was, by the way, that was the worst joke of the cast so far that Falschnager just jump out. Well done. Congrats. Yeah, it's a drum roll, I think. <laughs> Well, I need a miniature symbol. <laughs> cool. So the next big news is, is kind of a big one for me, uh, a big one for I think you guys are a little bit excited about this. Is that uh, we are expecting in the next couple of weeks, I believe, um, big delivery of Empires and Flames, which is our bolt action theatre book, uh, which covers the Pacific and Far East theatres. So lots of love in there for the chickens, because yeah. the Japanese, for the Chinese as well. Uh, and of course, lots and lots of marine loveliness. Mr. Chesney appears to have one in his midst. I do. <laughs> so yeah, go on, guys. Well, you, well, I mean, I, I can talk for days about this thing. So uh, what are you guys? Have you from the book? What have you guys heard about the book? Uh, yeah, go on, go for it. For me, it's going to be marines, marine goodness. Uh, I started. Well, I said I started a small force. It's not a small force by any stretch of the imagination, but it's too small for my. So for me, it's going to be more amphibious stuff, more tanks, more grunts, more bodies on the ground. Uh, and I might expand the force to cover the US Army when it's fighting the Philippines as well, because then that opens up a huge range of new different vehicles that yeah. Marines necessarily operate. And it means I can just play around with more of the spoons and more conversions and that kind of thing as well, which is what I like doing. Just kind of put a bit of a unique spin on it. Nice, nice. Sam, any plans? Lots. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard talk of you using the, the exclusive miniature, the John Basilin miniature for something. Is that is that right? Yes, actually. Uh, sitting on my desk just for a left is a whole bunch of Japanese and some Marines. In fact, there's 15 Marines, there's three machine guns, and that's alone. And you can kind of guess where I'm going with it. Uh, so that, that should be done and sorted in the near future. Um, I'll try and plan it so that it coincides. We'll see what happens. Um, but there's that, there's the Chindits, um, because I've got my own Chindit course as well, which is still ongoing, I'm still painting it, but, but yeah, no, I cannot wait for it. Um, yeah, so uh, yeah, send it over, and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll be good, yeah. Yeah, absolutely, I think that the Barcelona figure alone is worth getting a book for. Mm. It's, uh, it's one of the things I was, I was looking through get some sample copies early to uh, to help us, you know, let people know what's coming out and what's in the book so we can talk about it when people phone us up, which is quite handy. And, and for me, 
couple of things stood out. One was uh, Barcelona himself. The, the rules uh, are not game breaking. He's only 60 points, but it really does give you a feel of what he actually did. So you can you don't have to be in a team and you don't have to be a fixed weapon with a machine gun with him there. So he kind of just picks it up and runs around with it, which is what he was famous for, obviously. So it's great, great fun. Um, and it's one of those rules where you just want to be able to use it as much as possible and, and talk about him as a character. And I think you don't often get that. It's sometimes people just look at it and go, oh, I get a plus one if I take this guy, so I'll take him. Uh, this guy has got a real story behind him. So, yeah, really excited about it. I, I think I'm just going to paint him up and then paint a Marine army around him. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say, you, you can find uh, some of the rules on the, on the website. Uh, if, if, if you're desperate to use it right away, and believe me, I am. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, yeah, uh, me, myself, huge excited, uh, absolute marine nuts. Been collecting marines for like two years now, uh, essentially just holding, 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 uh, and doing strange things with screws and making every unit possible, uh, and a few more that aren't possible and shouldn't really be in existence um, out of every war kit you can imagine. Um, Roman bits in there, there's shot bits in there, black armor bits in there, there's bits in there, um, there's everything. So, yeah, I'm really looking forward. I say there are obviously there are new units in there for the Marines. Uh, I may have already converted a few of them a while ago, preemptively, um, and I'll have a look at converted others uh, as well in the next month or so. Um, but yeah, really looking forward to it. Uh, Amphibious landing rules, I believe, are in there, um, so that really plays into my hands with my my buffaloes and my landing craft. Uh, we've been working with Sarissa uh, on some bits and pieces, and I believe they've got something really rather exciting coming out for landing craft enthusiasts in the next month or so. Um, so yeah, there's there's some awesome stuff coming. And again, obviously we've got releases to to support the release of the book. Um, so there are marine reinforcements coming starting from this Friday, and something coming out, um, and there's a box set coming out this Friday that might be of interest to some of you. Um, and then going forward, uh, Japanese we supplies. We filled some of the gaps in Japanese that we've been asked about uh, as tank guns, how it's coming. We've got uh, anti-aircraft gun coming. We've got a couple of very interesting uh, armored vehicles, uh, which we sneaked out on our Instagram page. Um, yeah. One of which has five vehicle flame throwers, which is uh, lovely. The Japanese players, not for me. Um, <laughs> but yeah, there's some. The Japanese weren't weren't known for their the potency of their tanks. They but they did make some really interesting slash, well, interesting uh, vehicles and engineering vehicles and things that were very very specialist uh, units. Um, so yeah, there's some interesting stuff coming from them. Uh, they're a very interesting force on their own. I know Chess plays Japanese. Plays I Japanese. do on regular, regular occasion. And they're a very flavorful force on the in the game. They're very, yes. very different from from a lot of others. They are. They are. Yeah. They, they've got a, a real feel about them that's different to any of the other Western armies. Um, I mean, it is important to know that the book doesn't mm. just cover the island hopping um, Japanese against Marines. Uh, all the British army stuff is in the Burma, the Philippines, as we were saying before, but the the uh, the scenarios based around for me, I, I pulled one out earlier. I was uh, I was looking uh, the the bloody terror scenario, and uh, reminds me of something that the U.S. Um, office did for us. Uh, Mike Majors and Chris Woodward over there did a fantastic looking six by four model, which was a uh, like a beach coastline with a U.S. Marine landing force, and they obviously came up with their own rules for the scenario itself. Well, it was bloody. Trust me, it was. It was uh, there's so many in trench works and dug in positions and bunkers and things like that. And actually, the the scenario in here that, that I think uh, we also looked at, um, written by Andy Chambers, probably worth mentioning. I think he's pretty pretty good at his writing. Some of the you may know him, yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. You may have heard of him. Um, but it really does give you that feel. And instantly, as I was reading it, I remembered the game that I played two years ago at Gen Con, and thousands of people came past these boards. Um, and they all commented on how good it looked because it's so iconic. Again, you can't can't think of anything better than uh, a scenario where the Marines have to force themselves ashore and take island by island by island. So um, yeah, check out. I think we we had an article on that board and the building of it. That might be worthwhile reposting again now that this book's out. But, um, yeah. yeah, check it out and make some terrain as well as uh, uh, dust off your arms. Excellent stuff. Okay, so that's a few topics on Warlord News. There are some other pieces coming this Friday, um, but it may be a bit early for us to mention those just yet. Um, so let's move on to something else that's, you know, slightly big news around the Warlord camp is a certain young know, Gates of Antares. What's that, then? What's that? What's that? I've never heard of that. Um, yeah, Young Gates of Antares. It's our soon-to-be-released sci-fi games, 1-8-mil sci-fi game, written by the one and only Rick Priestley. 
Uh, he's had this universe in his head for I don't know how many years and been developing every aspect of it like you wouldn't believe. Uh, it's been swimming around in his head, it's been brewing for years and years and years. He's finally had the chance to put uh, kind of his sci-fi game out there. Um, he's been given a blank canvas uh, and he's let his brain for the pages and create this, this beautiful, dynamic, diverse universe uh, full of all sorts of things that you, you, you can barely imagine. Um, so it's been coming for a few years now. We've had the beta rules out for around a year, maybe just over a year. It's about been base tested, yeah. It's been base tested by the community um, for about a year or so. We've had limited releases out to get core forces out for uh, I think three other factions so far. Um, and uh, yeah, it's now it's all coming together. We've got uh, the start set, which is called Strike Back to One, the Zapper Horizon, which is being released in early November. Uh, and for those of you who signed up to the exclusive uh, Bill Gates Mantaris newsletter, which has been going out for the past uh, six weeks or so, I think, um, there's something very exciting coming tomorrow uh, that we in the office are literally just like breaking with excitement about. Um, so, yeah, yeah, it's showing off. That not <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it's the big one. Over the past few weeks, particularly, we've uh, leaked images of screws from the start set, we've leaked images of uh, the Concord Interceptor bikes fully painted. Uh, we've shown images of a few different bits and pieces. Um, but tomorrow is is kind of the big one. Uh, so keep watching for that. Um, and Antares, we, we've pushed so much behind it. Uh, so much time in, um, around the all offices and the community in the past week or so. It's really ramped up. Um, so yeah, the seats need to come in. Uh, the studio have got uh, the first year or maybe just more than a year's worth of models mastered and ready to go pretty much. So we've got an entire year's worth of releases planned, which includes, I think, six plastic sets we've got planned for, uh, heaps of metals, yeah, support troops, elites, and things like that coming, uh, and then resins for some large creations, let's say, the vehicles, um, large creatures, and all sorts of bits and pieces, as well as scenery. We're talking to a few different companies on scenery, um, and there's just everything you can imagine and a whole bunch more coming. Um, so, so again, you guys, guys uh, uh, somebody came, came down to all HQ uh, with for last. So we have, have a game of Antares. Antares. See if the community I've seen. Uh, Chez has been playtesting Antares for I don't know how long. Um, Too long. Yeah. <laughs> so what are your guys? What are your guys' experiences with Antares? What are you working on for Antares? And what are you hoping for from the game? Okay, um, my experiences with Antares have been right from back when. Um, we looked at it as a Kickstarter. Uh, somebody mentioned the other name. It's probably worth pointing out again that it's, uh, it's a shame we didn't do it the way we wanted it first time. Actually, the way Rick wanted to do it was organically in his own time and like this. So rather than uh, get the, the community to fund a pot for him to go crazy and to do all this and the other, he's done it in his way. The way he, he first did it 30 odd years ago when he did his first sci-fi Book. It kind of just came out of his head slowly but surely, and it all built and built and built. So being part of that was really exciting. Um, the game itself played very, very well. We did a few gameplay videos back in January 2014, I think, um, and that was great fun. Uh, and since then, I've just been playing a couple of times a month at least, sometimes up to a couple of times a week. Uh, and for me, I'm, I'm getting my head around the game system and some of the nuances and then the tactics. I'm, I'm really looking forward to uh, list generation. Uh, there's really cool ways of putting lists together at different points. So you've got access to more specialized troops and more technical support for your forces the, the bigger the, the armies get. Um, so that's going to be really exciting to see what people gravitate to. Because that's obviously through playtesting. That's something you don't do. You don't pick an army, play with it, for six months and change it and add to it, you, you're chopping and changing and playing different rules and smaller lists. So it's going to be exciting to see what everybody else does with it. I think that's that's where my my bit is and see what other rules people pick up on. There's always something that we kind of think, oh wow, we haven't been using that to its full effect. Why haven't I been doing that? So uh, yeah, very exciting to see and to play with the new players. Exactly. So Sam and Andy, go on. Uh, let's have Sam go first. What's your experience with Antares? And uh, what are your plans for and what are your hopes? Well, obviously, I can't wait for the Star Wars to start. It's going to be pretty amazing. Uh, all plastic, pretty convertible. Um, and, of course, the Gar. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Gar. Yeah. Can't go wrong with you know, large armoured battles just running around, probably. Um, <clears throat> yeah, but when we went down there for the couple of days, it was an amazing sound. 
by all, I think. Um, but to actually play the game in a bit more curious context, like this makes sense, the current rules, yes, yeah, really good really, really opportunity to see how it plays. Um, and what we, what we did down there actually inspired me to carry on now. So mm -hmm. we were down there, um, we made a load of uh, terrain and scenery as well, just, just from whatever we could find, uh, which you guys uh, found sort of for us. Oh, there we go, there we are. I've got mine. I've got something together too. Yeah, that's all right. But, um, yeah, but because of that, we've then gone back, and now we're, we're like hunting around for anything we can find. And the great thing about this game is um, you guys can help create it as well because it gives everybody an idea of what different worlds could be, what kind of the races, what the buildings could be, um, even vehicles. Um, there's mm. loads of different people are doing all kinds of different stuff to um, vehicles. And stuff. And, uh, you so I, I've got one here, but I'm going to be doing it at some point. Um, we also check out Matt Hot Map. Um, tanks as well. I think we made one from a pair of binoculars. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Brilliant. Brilliant. Yeah, lots of exciting things going on. Because yeah. it's quite an open game, it, it, it's just purely open to imagination as well. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a game that it, 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 the community can get behind and we really, yeah, we really have got behind it. Really. Yeah. And that's, that's one of the things that I really love about as far as what's happened. Um, Obviously, for the past uh, probably three or four months, Rick has been kind of chained to his desk and he's been writing and finishing off the book and hammering away like you wouldn't believe. Um, so he's been kind of um, busy with that. So uh, the, one of the great things from you guys coming down the week that I saw was um, seeing Rick get back into playing the game, interacting with people, and, and getting new people and new influences into Rick. Um, Rick really got a spot to life. You can really see the, the spark in his eyes. You see his brain working with you guys. You know, with Matt uh, showing his conversions, his vehicles and stuff, you can see Rick just, you see the imagination of Rick just now sparks mm. life and their stuff. Yeah. So what I'm really looking forward to is, is when the full-on start sets released and when it gets chucked out there around the world, is seeing other people's paint jobs and boards and terrain pieces and vehicles and scratch mills coming together and that kind of feeding into what's here at Warlords. Because again, whenever we see uh, painted armies or, or battle reports or anything like that on, on Facebook uh, or sent into us by our help desk system, um, you would be amazed at the amount of excitement in the office in just this one room here. We've got several offices and several rooms and stuff, but um, the amount of, of yelping and uh, shouting and cheering that goes on when just seeing amazingly painted armies or painted miniatures um, or just seeing uh, tables and bits and pieces. And again, as, uh, as Sam was saying, things that we haven't imagined for the universe, other people have got, you know, uh, having several thousand people imagining different worlds, different tables, different. Um, Battle readers, different uh, things like that. Um, there's so much more we can do with all of you guys' help um, and your imaginations. And again, that, that feeds straight back into us, and we take those ideas on board. And I'm sure you'll see um, your ideas come through the game in different ways and different iterations over the course of the next however many years. Uh, we take just about everything on board and kind of digest it. And uh, yeah, so you may well see, you know, if you build a certain building that looks really cool, you may well get a message from us saying, hey, that's really cool, can we borrow a picture? Um, or you may well see something similarish come through the water pipeline in the future. It's that real human affairs um, side of Antares I'm really looking forward to. It really excites me. Yeah. I think it's important to, to note on that as well that that's something that Rick has always been super keen on. That again, 30 odd years ago, it influenced him. The staff the, for, for the company he was there with were really feeding into the. Uh, the fever of, of what he was doing, um, and through Alpha and Beta editions, some rules they haven't been dictated to by uh, by the public, but they definitely have been shaped. And it's all about the enjoyment levels and stuff like that. And going forward, I absolutely guarantee you that we will be able to shape the Antares universe by uh, what we all get behind in certain events, you know. And and individual customers and paint jobs can make their way into. You know, people don't realise how much that has an influence, like, like uh, uh, Rich was saying. But um, I'm also pretty sure that the, the Antares universe, as in the background, will be shaped by the community as well. Uh, we, we can have campaigns and we, we can do all sorts of battles and reports and feedback forms and what have you, and eventually the Antares universe will become bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, and we've all got a part to play in it, which is great. It's great to know that it's not just set in stone. I think that's what's exciting for me is, I say, even right at the start of this whole new universe, um, 
it's an organic thing at the moment. It's going to expand. It's going to grow. Um, you get to see it and shape it as you're playing your games, pretty much. Uh, mm. I think that's fantastic. And like I say, there's nothing set in stone, as it were, with regards to colour schemes and factions and all, all that side of it. So you can really let your imagination run light with it. I mean, I've spent a lot of time doing historical stuff, which is very prescribed. So for me, coming and doing some Antares bits later, it's like a breath of fresh air because I can just I sort of finish work and I can paint something, you know, whatever colour I like. I do crazy war paint on it or glow effect or you know whatever comes into my head as I'm doing it. It's like yeah, that'll do. It's not wrong. It's great. What are our what are our plans collecting wise? What are we all collecting? Uh, I'm not sure I can say exactly what I'm collecting just yet because I think it might spoil a certain aspect of the book. But I'm going with Concord to start with. <laughs> um, and expect lots of strange creations. And if you're familiar with my marine army stuff I've done before, um, expect lots of crea- uh, strange creations and um, bits from all different factions and um, everything assembled is not quite as it should be, kind of creatively assembled. Um, that's my kind of take on things. So I'm already working on some interesting stuff. I think most of you guys here, here in, the, in the call uh, have seen most of them. Uh, not all of them just yet. I'm still holding some bits back. Um, but what are we all thinking of collecting and, and gaming with and what are we liking? Uh, for me, at the moment, it's I've got a large, largish Concord force as it is. So when the plastics come out, I'll obviously reinforce it with them. But I'm probably going to do a different colour scheme to what I've done with my metals, just to freshen it up a bit. Nice. I'm also going to do a freeborn army. I've got them at the moment ready to go. Mm-hmm. I want to, I want to do them as pirates who've you know been dealing with dodgy stuff they shouldn't have been selling to people for the last sort of few years. So they started getting a few mutations in. You've got people wearing sort of their hoods up to help disguise their faces and nice. pain and sort of grubliness going on. Uh, <laughs> the like a little bit warped, a little bit more warped and twisted than they are at the moment, and just sort of make your make your skin crawl a little bit if you look at them. That's my plan at the moment. There's a so, certain I've heard rumours of a certain model slash unit coming out that um, would very much suit that. Yeah. Oh, good. No, that'll be yeah. convenient. <laughs> Um, the, uh, my leader needs to have an eye patch as well. I've decided that's. Uh, that's... <laughs> well, they do come across as your your your, um, your piratey trader type, even just by looking at them without having to read the background and stuff like that. They've really captured the image of, of what it is. And again, it's it's a trading universe. These guys have to survive somehow. Um, and it's not a it's not always. Sometimes it is obviously, but it's not always a, just a, a burn. Uh, onto the next planet, burn, burn resource. So these guys have to. You know, the Boromites are famous for some of their mining colonies are the best in the entire universe. Um, so with with them, like you said, with that with the eye patch, it's kind of it just jumps out and says yes, yes, definitely. Very fun. I think I might even go so far as to write a little bit of backstory for them as well. Yes. So, I mean, whether my leader wears this, the eye patch on the same eye every day, or whether she forgets what eye she wears it on. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. I haven't decided quite how tongue in cheek I'm going to go with it yet, but it'll probably be fairly tongue in cheek. <laughs> nice. Uh, Sam, what are you thinking? What are you working on? What's your Antares plan? I think it's more of a case of what I'm not working on. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I've got enough now that I can feel all the traction so far. Because I think, well, we're having this conversation <coughs> between me and my gaming group lot um, about which one we all sort of prefer. Um, at the moment, I've done some vehicles for the Boromites, so they're, they're kind of on the top of the list at the moment. Um, the Algorin, uh, just because it was all the Algorin, as soon as I got them, they were the first ones I ever got. And cast your mind back to the first number that you ever got for the new game. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, you get that kind of feeling of, oh my god, these are amazing. Um, but I don't know, it's until I see the gar. <coughs> Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, anything and everything, really. Uh, it's very difficult to pick because all the factions are so good, so unique, uh, and have got a, a, It's just awesome. I don't know what else to say, really. Uh, uh, anything and everything. I'll fix it all. It's fine. Let's <laughs> well, say we've got like a whole year's worth of releases, so I've seen certain bits and pieces, certain very interesting units, and possibly larger things. Uh, so Chaz has seen a few more bits and pieces, and then you know through the through the company there are different levels of um, privy to access. So uh, in this office we've got say Chaz and we've got Andy who've seen bits and pieces more than I have. Um, and every time they come back from meetings, there's a big beaming smile on their face and the glint in their eyes kind of 
reignited. Um, so yeah, I'm not entirely sure what they've seen, but I've seen things stuff that's just like beyond my imagination. I couldn't imagine some of these things. Uh, and you can imagine a lot. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Quite a bit of imagination in this one. Um, but yes, yeah, yeah, it's it's fantastic. And again, the core six races, um, there are plans to release plastics for all of them, I believe, next year. Um, and then beyond that, there's there's all sorts of other things. The Gate to Antares. Yeah. yeah. A film. Computer game. <laughs> well, well, who knows? Well, <laughs> <laughs> I know. I, I collected a few bits of everything along along the months and uh, years over the last you know couple of years of playtesting, obviously. But I think I I played with Boromite for a very long time just because I love the look of them. I think that they're just great looking figures, and, and Wojtek is rightly very proud of it, and he is doing some amazing new stuff for those as well. So uh, you would believe the amount of different cribbies and vehicles and all sorts of stuff that they're going to get. But um, I think my my army on release, probably certainly for the first three or four months, is going to be um, Algorin, something that I didn't play so much in the last year. But um, talking about strange colour schemes and things that you're saying, Andy, I'm going to go with, uh, um, obviously when you were down, I sprayed some yellow burning wash on them. I've, I've done one with a digital camo on it, with just black and white. Oh, um, wow. Gabriel, the one of the guys that paints a lot of the stuff for us here, very very accomplished painter, um, just said, "Well, if you're going to go for it, go for a contrasting colours." And it's just it's kind of really quite cool. And I haven't felt like like you said, uh, Andy, prescribed painting. I've never been one for saying that historicals is as prescribed as that. Mm -hmm. uh, and I know you do it for for a living, so you you get dictated to a lot. But even with historicals, I love making up colour schemes. We don't really know what colours all the, the Roman regiments were, or the biblical armies and stuff like that. We know they were probably a bit washed out and a bit rough around the edges. But uh, And certainly through the Italian wars and Pike and Shot eras and the Paleolics, there's so many amazing colours mm. that I think bringing that into a science fiction universe wow. where you really can just go crazy yeah. um, is going to be great fun. So yeah, a yellow, yellow Algorin army with, with black and white digital camo and then go from there. Really. I'm quite looking forward to that. It's going to look awesome. That really yeah. is. It'll just, just really pop on the table, isn't it? With like yellow. Yeah, yeah, white. <laughs> <laughs> not, not too much. They're in the middle of a war, so uh, they're always fighting everywhere. No, it's got to look garish. It's got to be like right in your face. Otherwise, how will anybody know you're there? Well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Okay, so I think we've got quite a lot of ground there. So, um, how about guest topics? Have we got any guest topics, guys? Have you guys got any topics you want to talk about in particular? Anything at all? Yeah, what sort of hobby have we all been up to recently? Good question. Um, not me first, we've been sticking these together, which are the, the newly arrived plastics, which you guys have seen on uh, on various uh, Intel things. So we're actually going to be using them. There we go. Thank you, Richard. We're going to be using those for the first time this weekend at the Derby show. Um, so I suppose my hobby would be based around making sure that we're uh, getting ready for the next couple of events. Obviously, being events manager, um, my, my hobby and my work cross over massively. Uh, last weekend, we, uh, we were down at uh, the Cardiff tournament, so thank you very much to Ian and Jack and all the guys down at Firestorm Games. It's probably worth mentioning that, even though it's a, a posthumous event. Really, really good fun. Um, it's great playing uh, and seeing Bolt Action being played so much. Uh, Derby is 3rd and 4th of October, which is going to be one of the biggest events in, in the UK outside of Salute, I think, now. Absolutely must be. Um, for that, we've got uh, the Antares demo board with Nick and Rick himself, so that's very, very exciting. Uh, we've got a Bolt Action tournament, got that. and then uh, the week after, 10th and 11th of October, we've got the Essen show. Well, Essen, in fact, is four days, and, uh, and then we've got Selwig also on the 11th of October as well. So my hobby for, the, for this one is, is really intensely around demo gaming and things like that, which actually I love. Sometimes it's nice having your pickup games at, at club nights and around your mate's house. But also that, that kind of fresh feel to every time you demo to a new person, seeing the look on their face. Um, it's great, great fun. So uh, yeah, that, that's my hobby for the last couple of weeks. Yeah, very nice. It'll be a chapel. <laughs> yeah. Shall I take over next? Uh, Hobby-wise, I say I'm working on the Concord Army, um, but again, yeah. it's quite themed, it's quite distinctly themed, so what I've done um, is a lot of converting. Um, it's based on, it's all metal models, um, and I've created an entire army's worth, so there's an entire army of, at the moment it's about 40 miniatures, um, and each one is converted. Uh, so I've been hacking off limbs, I've been hacking off arms, legs, I've been 
uh, insane arms from like US Marine Corps groups. So there are a couple of arms and hands in there from Marines. There are arms and hands in from the pre-mentioned uh, Concord sprues from the start sets. So there's pieces in there to get some different poses in there. Um, and then things like I've just been saying, I've been assembling things wrongly. I've been assembling things in the way they shouldn't be assembled. So things like um, the Concord Heavy Plasma Drone uh, has these sort of wings on the back that kind of go around the main structure and they're kind of backwards. So they kind of um, well, they're only meant to be forwards. So they're meant to be kind of shrouding around. It's quite almost like a circular shape. I've taken those wings and turned them around backwards, so it looks more elongated and looks like a spaceship. Um, just to say things wrong, really. And then things like um, on the plastic screw, you get uh, a big support room uh, with this new weapon that we haven't released before. So I've taken that, and when you assemble it normally, uh, this sort of uh, hook shape is kind of vertical. I saw that and I thought, well, you know, I've converted everything else, let's convert this as well. So I turned this and put it horizontal as well. So everything in the army, um, there's nothing in the standard at all. Everything's been converted. And with them being metal miniatures, I mean, I've converted um, plastics like you wouldn't believe before, um, just hacking everything apart. I've put in metal bits and pieces, but I don't think I've really done an awful lot of um, working on specifically metal miniatures. I've sort of taken bits from metals and incorporated them into plastics. So working with uh, metal miniatures, uh, they're all, um, uh, the bodies are all one piece, so all the arms are on one believe, apart from some of the troopers. So yeah, hacking, hacking limbs off and re reposing them, um, bits of grey stuff here and there, and little filler bits and pieces to kind of um, get rid of all the conversion scars has been very interesting. Um, it's been uh, it's been quite a lot of wonderful choice language at times. Um, <laughs> just been a lot of a lot of my DNA because I've managed to glue myself to the wall several million times. Um, so my housemate, I'm sure, is, is has been quite concerned about the amount of of language and super glue fumes coming up in my room the past few weeks. Um, yeah, yeah, so, so just moving on with that, really, I want to get that ready for release. Uh, you guys will attest to the fact that I am the slowest patron in the universe. So, um, you guys in the office will be to get things uh, sorted and finalized and done. Um, I've been doing that, really. Lots of, lots of concords, lots of uh, theme concords, uh, force, and then reading into the background of them and kind of coming up with my own fluff. Um, so that may be released at some point, I don't know, it was kind of an article or something else in size. Um, but there's a backstory to them, where they are, where they fight, where they fight um, who they fight, and all that kind of thing. So just the birth of an army, really. Um, and then say Marines inside still, I'm still doing things with my Marines, but it's been yeah, two years into the project. I'm still converting stuff, so I've done um, waiting kits for my Shermans, the Pacific waiting kit, the big chimneys on the back. I've done uh, a bridge laying Sherman, I've done a Sherman ARV, I'm doing a Sherman BARV. So strange conversions on the Sherman. I've got enough Shermans that are standard Shermans, I've got enough you know, support Shermans. It's now onto the weird stuff. So yeah, just hacking things apart. There's so many more kits in ways they really shouldn't be, really. Um, that's kind of my thing. So yeah, that, that's me. Uh, Sam, what have you been working on? Apart from everything I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, well, apart from I've been doing a, <coughs> a lot of stuff for potential and future and current articles. So, um, <coughs> recently I've been building a lot of foreground stuff for the series. So, um, Marines, of course, we're doing that. But I've also been doing um, uh, Russian force, um, all in, in, in the uniform because it's, it's a glorious box set. I've got another one of those box sets to carry on with. Um, and we've also, I've also added an aerosand to it with uh, some converted ski troops, which will be towed behind it in the game. Um, so that, that, that's that's really quite interesting. Yeah, um, been a bit of a unique take, I think, for a Russian force, but should be good. Uh, mm -hmm. There's the ongoing drone cater as well. That's still <coughs> that's that's still being done. Um, it's all built. It's all very nice. Very nice and shiny. Waiting to use it and. Uh, going to try and build some sort of train for it, so we can actually mount the thing onto the carriage so we can carry it. Um, mainly, as well, that I could actually use it in a game that does not involve water. <laughs> um, but aside from that, uh, there's Terminator stuff, there's Judge Dredd, uh, there's, and I'm also building a Macedonian army. Um, yeah, busy, busy. So aside from doing all the stuff in the articles, and obviously writing the articles, and there's my own stuff, which um, I'll leave it'll be like 
Uh, it's all work related slash hobby related. Um, Tell us a bit more about your Macedonian, Sam. We haven't really touched on anything Hail Caesar or, or whatever like that. Yeah. Just it's a period that I really, really love. Um, something I'm interested in. Hail Caesar as, as a game itself is for me. And you know, let, let's see how much Antares impinges on that. But for me, it's one of the most, most enjoyable. You can really get your teeth into it. You can build a huge army and then do a force like that. So tell us a bit more about the Macedonians. Yeah, well, so far, I've got 120 um, of the of Phalanx ready. Ouch. And that's taken a while. <laughs> um, but I'm just going to add some more um, cavalry to it. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you can't have the... Uh, out of the phalanx that have um, some skirmishes to go along with it as well. They're there to do. Um, it's going to be a fairly fairly sizable course once it's finished. Um, and the, yeah, it, it's just for me, I've always been into the ancient Greeks and, and the Romans and stuff like that. Um, and eventually, knowing me, I'll be able to force the meat to you. Yeah, the, the, the Macedonian just appears to me. They, they, they a really nice, very simple to put together, really lovely to do. Mm. Um, and so much so that I will eventually do an article on it. We'll get that out there and we'll have a look at it. Um, I think me and Andy, actually, as a single person, I think we're going to try and have... Because I've not played Hell's Easy yet. I was me. And I know there are plans in the in motion to build our own force, have a bit of a battle, uh, on all of and uh, see where we go from there. Yeah. So I mean, I think between us, we're going to do our own armies. Uh, you're doing Romans, aren't you? I am. Yeah. Yeah. I've just put, nearly, nearly finished my third, uh, third century of Romans. But, Is that them in the background? Yeah. I can see. Uh, yeah, over there. Nice. <laughs> just seeing the string of red. So I just need basing, which I might do tonight, and then they're done. Or another edition's done. Um, yeah. <laughs> I think between us, we're, we're going to um, build them up, and document them, get them out there, and then we'll accumulate it in a bit of a battle. Um, yeah. And there we go. Yeah. So it'll be it'll be Macedonia versus Rome. Could be pretty cool. <laughs> a what if scenario? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Very much. <laughs> now that sounds really exciting, actually. So, uh, are you going to come on down to Nottingham to play that? Are we going to be able to take some photos and? Uh, Get it on an article. Be yeah, very good. Good. It's got to be done. Good. Come in. Need an audience. Need witnesses. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Witnesses need a map. Hmm. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So, shall we round up with some questions? We posted out on Facebook uh, today asking for questions from the community. So, questions about anything at all, anything warlords. Um, obviously, between me and Chess, uh, we know X amount of stuff. Um, so some of the questions will be kind of archived to wait until next, the next show, the next show after, um, as we go and question certain people around the business who might know more about certain subjects. Um, but I think uh, Andrew's picked out a few questions for us to cover. Yeah, I've got, I've got the whole list. I've picked out a few, but there's a couple of uh, discussional questions. There's a few questions where I can just give a straight answer, and it's very, very simple. Um, there's a couple that I'd like to put to the... Uh, the two non-staff as well, and just to get their opinion on, on how um, we interact with, with the community on, on bits and pieces. So uh, I suppose the biggest and the most often asked question right now is about version 2 of Bolt Action, if and when we are doing <coughs> that. Um, so right this very second, we obviously know that the Bolt Action is doing very, very well. It's, you know, we, we're in uh, partnership with, with Osprey, uh, they have been you know, very kind about uh, the, the amount of work that we're doing with them and stuff. It's been amazing. It's basically blown all the numbers we've got out of the water. It's a very, very successful game. Um, now, to keep it going successfully, games survive on, on new editions. So it's no surprise that people are asking about it. And absolutely, the questions are, are being asked about how and when we'll do it. All we know is that um, it will need one. Um, it's not going to be straight away. I think there's a couple of questions on there asking, are we going to have it out by Christmas and things like that. Absolutely not. We, we, we still have a whole year's worth of releases, uh, at least, um, for the current edition we've got. So uh, there, there's another supplement book, um, I think, is it Christmas or into the New Year, Richard, which is uh, the, the desert into North, uh, yeah, North yeah. Africa into Italy. Yeah, I think we're looking very exciting. Yeah, early next year for Jordan the Sun, isn't it? That's, uh, yeah. I think early next year. 
yeah. But for me, it, it's a case of it will not be a brand new game. It will be. Uh, it's very important to put it out there that we are very, very happy with the way the bolt action plays. There are obviously a few minor tweaks now that it's been out in the world for three years. <laughs> We'd like to make and improve upon. Uh, there's a lot of uh, minor things in the errata sections and things which will obviously make their way in. But uh, playtesting and things like that in, in earnest will, will go on and on um, for, for a long time yet. Uh, so no exact date. Keep going, keep playing, keep supporting, and uh, that kind of thing will, will come out in the wash, I'm sure, in the future. Uh, let me go on to a question which is a bit more of a discussional one. Um, James Wright and a few others uh, have asked about minor nations um, in terms of rules and figures and things like that. Uh, something as a, as a company we always find is we cannot do everything. There were, there were four and a half thousand different vehicles in World War II in terms of variations of tanks and trucks and whatever. There is absolutely no way we're ever going to do them all. And in terms of the, the nations as well, things like Hungarians and Romanians keep cropping up as well as Turkish, whatever. There are, there are lots, lots and lots and lots. We're not going to be able to do plastic or metal kits for everything. Um, and how how do you, people like yourself, Andy, especially, I suppose, with, with being asked to paint things like that, how does the community cope? Are there tools we want to be able to convert? Are there, do we need to do an article on, on how to paint and convert particular minor nations? Um, we do a few lists. I think we did a Chinese list before. Mm -hmm. Is it a case of we, we need to get somebody enthusiastic and to write a list and do, do some more articles? Or are people only ever going to do it if we release a box set for them? So, over to you guys, really. I think there's a big movement of people actually just going out and converting. Because you look at a lot of uniforms, especially sort of in the 30s and 40s, they were essentially the same, the same cut, the same equipment. But it you know, varied in colour, varied in position sometimes, but a lot of it was very similar, just with slightly different variations on helmets. Mm. So you look at, say, the Hungarians, the Romanians, the Finns, they all wore uniforms that are very similar to the German, the mm -hmm. German uniform in the cut. So a bit of green stuff, it's not that difficult to actually convert from, say, a plastic figure, which is, you know, marvellous for converting from anyway. Mm -hmm. Just go the extra step and just do something different. And the only awkward bit is usually the, hel the helmets. Um, you know, sometimes they wore like the Adrian helmet, like the French helmet, or they wore like a variation of the Dutch helmet. But even those are relatively simple because, you know, especially like if you're doing uh, Romanians who wore the Dutch helmet, because it's basically a blob. <laughs> so it's not <laughs> that much of a stretch to make it out of a bit of green stuff and no. a bit of swearing. That's <laughs> 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 the most important part of the toolbox, of course. Um, but yeah, it's relatively simple to do. You just have to get your head in the area, really, and just sort of think a little bit, sort of outside the box, and think, oh, yeah, that could work. And just chop around and sort of jump in, really. Yeah. Well, I mean, you can also look at um, other uh, ranges from different systems, if you some of the black powder stuff. Yeah. Uh, for instance, I've used some of the Zulu heads on um, marine bodies, just to put a bit of a variation. Um, yeah, so it's just something around, see what you can find. Mm -hmm. and, uh, like I say, it's either uh, music in the or even just a simple uh, head swap sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, head swaps alone is sometimes enough, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Like you were saying, Andy, I think uh, an important thing to say from Warlord Games officially is the fact that we are okay with people coming up with cool rules for things that we don't do. Um, they're probably, you know, we're not going to print them or anything like that, but we can definitely facilitate them on the forums and tell people about them. And if they are constructed in a, in a you know, a legible manner, then there's every chance we'll include them on a newsletter, especially if they're backed up with conversions and articles. It's, um, it's something we really want to do is, is make sure everything is covered in, in a whatever way we can. And sometimes just a nod to somebody's own personal army. Uh, is enough to give people inspiration and enough to, to get them through. I, I would love to say that we're going to cover every single minor nation in the next two or three, four years. Chances are we're not even going to get through them that quickly because of uh, how long it takes to get a range done. Um, but you know, suggestions to uh, keep them coming in and, and don't just say when are we going to when are we going to do this when are we going to do this. Try and try and reach out to your friends and who, who amongst you guys are going to do a Romanian army and let us know how it's converted. That would be super exciting. Um, and we'll even get you on to, the, to a Google Hangout and let everyone know how you did it. Why not? Uh, 
Thank you very much, Aaron. Right. Uh, next one, um, Richard Sims would like a signed photo of Lorenzo in his pants. I did, uh, just to let Richard know, I did raise this with Lorenzo today, uh, and unfortunately he, he wasn't... Um, he wasn't quite with the idea, unless I think quite a large amount of money exchanged hands. So maybe we can send him an email to info at wargames.com uh, and like a formal request, uh, and he'll maybe invoice you for a special service such as that. Thank you, Starter. Thanks, uh, Starter. <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure about that one. I'm really not sure about that one. Um, okay, there's a, there's a number of questions on products. Uh, when are products coming out? Um, most of them seem to be bolt action centric, but there are a lot of questions about uh, Napoleonics, I mean, Dutch Napoleonics. I've got some here. Any more for the Portuguese range from Napoleonics, um, Prussians, things like that. Uh, the release schedule is is, a, is an amazing thing. We have. Uh, it's very important to to remember that that War of Games are determined to support all of the game systems that we already have. Um, so we have. Uh, Hail Caesar, if you want to do anything from a couple of thousand years BC all the way through to medieval times. You have Pike and Shot for, for that Renaissance and uh, European Wars period. Um, Black Powder, uh, Bolt Action, and now obviously into the future. Very, very exciting, very, very hard to cover everything all the time. Um, they are all getting things released for them um, every year, which means obviously it, it clogs up the release schedule. So, um, if you play Napoleonics, you've had a lot of love this year, a hell of a lot of love, and there's more coming. There are um, more cavalry units. We obviously did our first cavalry box a few months ago. A couple of you have asked about uh, any more of those. There's definitely more. There's Lancers, there's, there's Cesars. It's, it's exciting. Um, so that's really cool. Uh, in terms of metals and, and other things to back up current plastic box sets, definitely in the pipeline. Not always come at once, but when you get some, you will get a lot in a batch. So uh, that's important to note as well. Um, it is probably one I've put out for discussion. Where does Bolt Action go after the theatre books? I know, you know this one. I know well, the answer for this exactly. one. So, I thought you might do. Yeah, somehow. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we've, we've said about it a minute ago. We've got Empire and Flames out very, very soon. Um, and we've got the Fight in the Desert, which covers North Africa into Italy in a few months' time. So where does it go from there? Richard, give us an insight. So, yeah, theatre books. Uh, after the theatre books, um, there are going to be campaign books, I believe we're calling them, which is um, where we really uh, focus on specific uh, engagements, specific uh, key battles and things like that. So there's talk of a um, Market Garden book, there's talk of a Starling book, things like that. So we, key, we focus on some of those really key, uh, iconic engagements. Uh, and again, more specific units for those. Uh, we'll be, you know, rules for them. We'll have uh, models to support them. Uh, we'll have scenarios in there. We'll have characters in there. You know, all the famous leaders, all the famous um, characters and people from those battles uh, is, I believe, the plan. Um, the other big thing to mention uh, is that in I think March, April next year, we are working with Scotland Goblin on Conflict Forty Seven, which is our first Weird War expansion for Bolt Action. We've got a few PDFs on our site, which is after zombies and vampires and things like that in the game. Uh, but this is a big partnership with Pop uh, with Goblin, um, which will mean that we get to use their walkers in our game. We will have some of their stranger infantry units, um, taking bits and pieces. And also there will be, I think, from my understanding, as many aspects of the Weird War as possible. So there, I think we've just heard of werewolves in there somewhere, vampires, uh, and all kinds of sort of rules to use those in the game. Um, and it will be a standalone supplement one stand, so uh, you will buy one rule book of Conflict 47 and have all the rules and all of the units and everything in there. Um, and it will be a, a take on the bolt action rules. So it's based around bolt action, but the rules will be slightly different here and there to accompany for the, the weird feel, the weird uh, nature of the game. And that, that's going to be huge. It's going to be a real departure for us, um, but again, Lots of excitement here at the office about that. And again, the community has been asking for a weird war stuff for, for quite a while. So that's going to be amazing. And Clockwork Goblin's miniatures are, are amazing. Um, from what I understand, it will be kind of using their existing range, our existing range, and there'll be things like conversion packs and conversion kits. So you'll get um, a Tesla turret for your Sherman tank. You'll get you know, laser turrets for X, Y, and Z tank. So you'll have your existing Sherman, your already in action. You'll then buy a, a turret to make it into some weird and wonderful creation. 
Um, and things like zombie conversion packs, I believe. So you'll get your, your German infantry screws, and you'll get your zombie screws, and you them to make German zombies, uh, from what I've heard. Um, but yeah, that's going to be huge. And then from there, um, yeah, just refinements to the game, I believe. Uh, there's talk of the tournament pack, official tournament pack, and things like that. Um, and from there, just, just onwards. Onwards, onwards, onwards. Yeah, absolutely. Onwards, onwards. We're going to work with the um, What Would Pattern Do guys, uh, the WWPD, uh, who are also affiliated with VaultAction.net before that. Uh, and we're going to do something, again, it's, it was a community-led thing. Uh, Alessia was very, very keen for people to just play basic Bolt Action. I uh, say basic in, in the kindest possible way. It's a, the, the game as it is in the rule book. Because it's a brand, brand new system. People are learning it. We wanted people to have turned up from wherever they are in the country and play the same game. So uh, we were very aware that uh, obviously lots of people out there wanted to change it up a bit and, and uh, change platoon structures and, and how many flamethrower tanks you could have in, in any one list and things like that. And that's absolutely fine. But we, you know, the fact that the game's now been out there for three years, um, it's the right time, in my opinion, um, to, to actually do an official Warlord Games seal of approval tournament pack. Now, this isn't um, something that we will dictate and you have to use. This will just be, if you want to, we will provide you with it. Um, you can carry on doing what you're doing stuff and change the bits and pieces. Obviously, it's not going to uh, please all the people all the time, um, but we, we feel like it's, it's the right time to do it. And you know, uh, the guys over at uh, WWPD, uh, uh, they're just as big a hobby fanboys as we are. So um, it, it's really nice to, to work with them and these guys that put so much effort into it. Uh, so that's really exciting. That's something that I'm going to roll out uh, by Christmas, um, so we can use it, use it for a new new season into the into the next year. So yeah, that's very very exciting. I think Andy, you've already got one of the uh, of <laughs> walkers out in your marine army, I believe. Uh, yeah, at the moment it doubles up as a Sherman when it has to. Nice. <laughs> oh, it's, cool. it's about that big. It's huge. It <laughs> Put it out of the box. <laughs> Oh, it is a fantastic centerpiece. It just sort of lives on the shelf at the moment. I've got it sort of wading out the sea. Oh, that's such a cool model. I can't wait to see what else is coming out for that. Yeah. So, I mean, if this comes out so far, the stuff to come, it's going to be like, next level, I think. It's going to be so Absolutely. Yeah. I quite need to mix some of the stuff in with my, um, my Soviet stuff as well, because they, they do some nice British uh, um, like robots as well. Yeah. 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 I think they call them. They, they yes. do the Soviet... Armoured troop, which just looks crazy. I've got some of those as well. They're very yeah. cool. You're showing off now, Andy. I've actually got a few bits of their stuff and quite a fan. <laughs> Well, I did, actually, I picked up one of their walkers um, for the first time a couple of years ago, uh, and it's just a fantastic piece. I didn't care what I was going to use it for. I just bought it because it was an amazing, amazing model. But I think yeah. that's the really exciting thing. We're not just adding something for the sake of it. Weird War is it's a great concept. It's a great idea. You can use your current bolt action armies sure. in exactly as they are and just add really cool sci-fi stuff to them. Yeah. Um, also, the, these figures are worthy of being added to, to anybody's army. So uh, the Grizzly, the, the, the German Walkers, the ones I first picked up, and now I'm, I'm super excited. I'm kind of trying to trying to not get carried away because I'm just excited by everything, mostly and Tara's base right now as well. Um, but yeah, come New Year uh, when we start building up towards uh, Conflict 47, I will be dusting off the British and, and probably doing a new American army, probably do a Soviet one as well. Let's be honest, I'll do them all. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, very, very excited about that. There can be some very interesting stuff for the Japanese in there as well. I can imagine them having some really mad stuff. There's so, yeah. With all the, with a million flamethrowers on it, just the extra stuff with the gravity claws, like proper claws. Just yeah. Godzilla. Just as yeah. Godzilla. Godzilla. <laughs> very good. Very good. That's my latest article. That's what it's going to be. Yeah. <laughs> Done. It's nice. a deal. It's a deal. Right. Um, Shall we have one more? Let's, let's have... Uh, okay, let's have... Two more. Two. One is nice and easy. Um, this one is it's up between the four of us. Let's get down to it, make sure I get the right person. Bill Harrison says, who ate all the pies? Today, the entire tray bake. The entire yeah. tray bake. So I'm yeah, I can claim, yeah, I claimed all the pies today. Okay. Well, 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 is it? Yeah, it is. It's the one that you guys brought, uh, just brought up. We've, we've just finished it today, so it's very good. Okay, you brought, so... You brought so much cake, it took us over a week to get through. Uh, this time, uh, Richard Dando gets the I Ate All the Pies Award. Um, and uh, the last one, again, 
it's, it's a discussion on one because it isn't um, something we have an answer for, but it's something that we can probably think about and get excited about. Is uh, somebody asked, are we going to do an Antares campaign? Oh. Um, so <laughs> the the bolt action campaign obviously went live over the summer um, for six weeks, summer holiday weeks. We encouraged people to register um, games and battle reports uh, and influence the the the, the war. Basically, we had maps, we had interactive uh, game result systems, and and Graham and Andy did a fantastic job digitizing what we would probably end up doing on on paper in our living rooms if we were doing it ourselves. So it it looked fantastic. And a couple of people have asked us about that. So um, thoughts from the floor about what you'd like to see in an Antares campaign. I want to see some digital maps, so like a digital solar system, then you can travel to different planets. That would be pretty cool. And then each planet, is, each faction takes it, gives them maybe bonuses as the campaign goes on. That would be quite fun. Yeah. Uh, maybe unlocks characters as well, some sort of special characters we can convert up as the campaign goes on. That would be quite fun. Idea. Yeah, so these sort of leaders and things emerge as they take a planet and you know, they sort of stood out from the, the army that's taken it. That would be fun. Well, I'd like to do sort of like similar to what we did with the uh, newspaper article, but we'll do like intel kind of reports and stuff. And then, yeah. Would you like to know more? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah that, 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 that'd be quite nice to see as well, actually. Something really cool, like, yeah, something very tongue in cheek, you know. Got to have something. Of course. And if, if Rick has got anything to do with it, the whole thing will be tongue in cheek, I'm sure, because he, he loves that. He's pretty, He's such a fun person to work with. He's like everything full of pixies. So yeah, it's great. Yeah. Well, just to, to, to hijack for a second, uh, obviously I work as part of the web team, um, and a big part of Antares is that you know, it's, a, it's a platform that really allows us to, to take on technology and really um, take a step forward and step a, you know, beyond what we currently do. So the Bolt Action campaign was um, something of a toe in the water, I think, with regards to online campaigns. We created that one. Um, I say we. Uh, Graham created that one. Uh, we took all the credit from it, um, and uh, we created it kind of as a, as a fairly robust but sort of basic campaign system, with the thoughts of maybe doing something more advanced in the future, whether that be for Bolt Action, the LCs of Black Shot, Black and Pe Black Powder, or for Antares. Um, we we definitely plan to do more online campaigns in the future. Um, and now that we've done the, the basic one, the Bolt Action campaign was a great success. Uh, we can now start to bolt on um, extra bits and pieces. Um, so we take the, the current uh, system and we add in all sorts of extra bells and whistles. Um, so, yes, we've got a nice big whiteboard up there um, that may or may not have quite a lot of uh, ideas on there. We, there may or may not be shared documents that are all sharing ideas and bits and pieces. Um, there's also a cracking thread on the wall of forums with people giving us feedback on the Bolt Action campaign, what they would like to see in the future, that kind of thing. Um, we're taking all of that on board uh, and we plan to do something. Um, and obviously... The past, I say, the past few months has been kind of chaos with the build-up to launch of Zyos Horizon. Um, so everything's been kind of um, campaign-wise been put on a bit of a slow burner a little bit. Um, but uh, next year we're certainly doing a campaign, um, and we're currently in discussion of how many bells and whistles we throw on there, how much resource we throw at it. Um, we could we could do all sorts of bits and pieces. Yeah. yeah, we could do all sorts of bits and pieces. Um, it just depends on, on resource and things like that. And again, I say, certainly, um, for those who don't know me, well, Sam predominantly wrote uh, all the little in-character news, newspapers for the Bolt Action campaign, um, and they went down really, really well in the community, and everyone loved them. So, yes, certainly there'll be some sort of uh, narrative bits and pieces in newsletters, whether it's sort of the voice of Intel coming through or um, distorted voices of Gar or something like that coming through as well. There'll certainly be bits and pieces like that to, to fluff it out and give it character as well. Um, so we certainly plan on something. Um, as to what level of fanciness that is, uh, that depends on a few meetings that are coming up over the next few weeks, I believe. Very exciting. Yes. Sorry to have hijacked. No, no, I think it's the right thing. Yeah, I think absolutely letting people know that something is coming in. Yeah, There's we, always this air we, of expectation about what it could or couldn't be. I mean, it's, we'd love it to look like a computer game and to act like a computer game. But really, what we needed to do is to encourage people playing games against each other in their clubs and in their homes and at tournaments and at uh, events and things like that. So it needs to facilitate um, gaming you know, out in the big wide world. So uh, I, I think, for me, so having some kind of reward scheme for people that have uh, 
play games or encourage other people to play games or set up events and actually name them and, and give them ranks. And I think that might be what you're saying, Andy, have, have personalized characters and things like that. I'd love for somebody in the community to be able to name a character or something like that. I think it's just, it just sounds like um, like a great idea. And then to have it as part of the Antares feature, or if we do it again for, for Bolt Action, to, to name a private after them or something. Nice, nice. Cool. And you said one more? No, no they were the two. No. You forgot cool. the who ate all the pies, Rich, and that was you. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I've got, I've got, I've got cake on the brain now. I've got cake sat there. I'm now thinking about cake. Yeah. So in the box now. I know there's some leaked around in it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> now I think uh, I think finishing on 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 that and getting people focused on on how exciting it is for us as a company and and it's still very very new for us. You know, selling and promoting and playing science fiction is something that uh, is very very different from from all the historical side of it because we make it up as we go along and that's the right thing to do, which is great. So uh, yeah, more encouragement for you guys, and, and let us know how you think and how you feel, uh, and we'll be very interested to uh, to see where it goes from here. Fantastic. So just a quick reminder before we go, uh, for those of you who are signed to Intel the newsletter, keep watching. Uh, I believe we've just got midnight tonight. There'll be something very exciting in your inboxes. Uh, those who haven't signed up, go and sign up now because uh, you're going to miss out on something really, really quite special tomorrow. Um, so on that note, it's a goodbye from me, Rich D. It's a goodbye from Andy. Bye-bye. It's a goodbye from the other Andy. <laughs> and, and it's a goodbye from Sam. Goodbye. Good night, guys. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in about two weeks, we believe. Thank you very much for watching. <laughs>